So guys, first Lethway match ever. Yes, first Lethway match ever. Esteban Payan El Terrible versus LT Smash Nelson. So El Terrible meaning the terrible versus Smash Nelson. Smash Nelson's a very famous fighter um, in the Colorado circuit. Esteban Payan's been in UFC and many other places. So guys, this is bare knuckle Lethway boxing. Okay, bare knuckle, look at that, bare knuckle. Look at that, no wraps. Just a little bit of wrist protection. You can headbutt, guys. You can headbutt. So, oof, already Esteban gets clipped a little bit. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Esteban's in trouble. Nelson is the younger one. Nelson's, ooh, did you see that? Nelson threw a headbutt. So Nelson's the younger one. And, okay, he's waiting for the ref to separate it. So it looks like this isn't completely Lethway rules because the clinch time isn't the same as Lethway. Ooh, Esteban, I mean... Uh, Nelson just throwing knees. Good. Esteban's got him. So. So the ref's telling him clinch rules. So Payan. Payan elects to ugh, stay in the pocket again or stay by the cage. I don't know what the right word is. But man, I don't know why he likes to stay by the cage. He fights like an... Oh, look at that. He threw a headbutt back. A sideways headbutt. Wow. Wow. Oh my goodness, man. Wow. Dude, it it might seem like he doesn't know how to defend, but remember, both these guys are used to fighting with some kind of gloves, right? Either um, boxing gloves, Muay Thai gloves, or MMA gloves. There's a little bit more padding. Look at how how much you don't, you don't protect yourself when you just cover up when you got no gloves. It's crazy. Look at this. Ooh, body shots. Good on Nelson. His corner must have told him that. Ooh, Bayan is um, throwing body shots back, dude. Oh, that was it, guys. That was it, man. That was brutal. This is bare knuckle boxing, but with headbutts, basically. So that's basically, or bare knuckle kickboxing with headbutts, because the clinch time was a little disappointing. I thought they were going to, you're going to see them fight it out in the clinch and use headbutts in the clinch, but it looks like maybe for safety reasons, I don't know. I mean, for safety reasons, maybe they shouldn't have allowed headbutts. But again, guys, if you train your neck very hard then and you learn to throw a headbutt correctly, I don't think you're going to give yourself brain damage. I mean, ask David LaDuck, right? In fact, guys, we'll cut to a quick segment in our David LaDuck interview. But before that, let's just look at some of the moments, man. Of course, Nelson was the aggressor. He's the younger one. He's 30. Um, Payan's 38. And, man, just relent pressure and man Payan ate quite a lot and then this kind of like helmet block type of thing covering up doesn't cover much when you don't have gloves look at that you see and Nelson you see would punch in between his hand and his shoulder Payan's hand and shoulder he would punch through that hole right there you see and then Payan to his credit tried man good head movement there but right there we see what looks like a liver shot once Nelson decided to hit the body. Look at that. Payan's hands are up and then to the body down there. But I don't know if they're going to have more replays here. Okay, so this is just some post-fight interviews. But since this is the first Lethway event, we definitely should highlight the first let headbutt in history in, in American bare-knuckle boxing. Happens about here. Right there, boom, uh, a front-on headbutt. And then later on, kind of in the clinch, we see um, Payan throw a sideways headbutt right there. Boom, sideways headbutt. And then Nelson throws a forward headbutt back. And the sideway headbutt, from my understanding, is more to give space in the clinch. So it doesn't do as much damage. It's just to create space. And, of course, this match didn't seem to allow that much clinching, so it's kind of not in the favor of a side head, but in general, not in favor of MMA guy Payan here because, you know, Payan wants to take him down and stuff like that, right? All right, guys, uh, Sparta Sports and Entertainment, courtesy of them. And now let's listen to David LaDuke talk about his first time throwing a headbutt.
the way the first headbutt that I threw was uh, against Tutu, my first, my first lightweight fight. Just to say that um, I was actually the first one to throw it, uh, which was a big like gamble because you're like, am I going to piss him off? Am I <laughs> going to, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like, gonna, it's like doing a push kick to the face. Like, yep. is he, is he going to be pissed one. off? Yeah. So we're in the clinch. I have his head, and then I, I threw a little one. It was not a big one, uh, but you know it is it. And then in the clinch, he started throwing them as well. So it's like you st- I started the, the the one, and then the the the, the ones that I because then after that, two two was my first little fight. Then I fought two times two two men in a row. Um, I didn't throw headbutts in those fights. I was because I knew that he was known for having extremely powerful side headbutts. So when you're in the clinch, you have and he, 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 you can actually pull the hair and and you do a headbutt. Hair. So you, oh yeah, of course. That's why I shaved. Oh, I didn't. So, know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah Tutu to, to, to actually tried it on me a few times. But yeah, if you if you're here and you want to create space, there you're allowed to grab the hair or grab the head, wow. you know, okay. and to actually like remove your head. And then smash for the headbutt. So I knew that Tutumin was extremely, extremely powerful in doing side headbutts. So I, I was only like blocking and protecting. I was only like, there's many ways to protect, right? I can put my head here, my hand here. So then if he headbutts me, my hand, it doesn't cut me. It doesn't lacerate me, right? So I put my hand on his head or I can just lock his, lock his head like this, right? I can lock his head like this. I can, uh, you know, there's many ways to, to, to do this just put my head on his my, my forearm and his neck so then I control the his head right I control it but then I can also collapse and headbutt so I but at least I have the I have the the, the control so and then the, but the moment to answer your question the moment I remember throwing the most headbutt was in the fight with uh, Adam Yilmaz a Turkish fighter uh, fight in Japan I broke my my finger in the first uh, the second round so I, it was dislo- dis- dislocated and broken. So I wasn't able to close my fist. Oh my God. So I wasn't able to punch, right? So, uh, yeah, it was disgusting. And my Burmese corner, Winton, former golden belt champion at uh, lighter weights, he didn't speak a word of English. I ne- actually, until recently, I never had an English-speaking corner. It was always Burmese guys, which makes it even harder because I don't only have to... Uh, to think to myself, okay, what do I need to do now? Usually I like to be told what to do in between the rounds, right? Now I had to think, okay, recover and also think about what's happening. So for sure I could have, I could have, uh, having another eyes tell me I could have done even, you know, even more, more things. And, uh, uh, so that's why I still think I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fairly new champ. I can, I'm only a fraction of, of my potential. And so, uh, but anyway, just to tell you that this fight, because I couldn't punch, I was doing uh, elbows and headbutts. So that's really, I'm kind of glad that this happened because otherwise I would have continued punch and doing more things. But because of that, it made me, made me realize, okay, I have other tools that I can use, right? I can headbutt in the clinch. I don't have to punch always. So I had to adapt, adapt or die. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I, I, after that, I started throwing more.